Hey everyone, welcome to another installment of Harry Potter Theory. In today's video, we're going to be discussing 10 things you probably missed while you were watching the Philosopher's Stone film. I'm also going to be doing a separate video highlighting 10 things you probably missed in the book, but today, let's focus on the films. Hunting for easter eggs and interesting tidbits within the Harry Potter films is one of my favourite pastimes. There's just something so special about looking through the halls of Hogwarts and discovering something you've never realised before, so today, I thought we'd spend some time doing just that. This time, we'll take a look at the very first Harry Potter film, The Philosopher's Stone, and see what interesting feats and facts we can find. 10. Anne Bolin the Witch The corridors of Hogwarts School of Witchcraft and Wizardry are filled with the portraits of famous witches and wizards from around the wizarding world. Now, when you think of the various famous sorcerers who adorned the walls of the school, who comes to mind? You might first imagine the headmaster's office, where all of Hogwarts' previous head administrators have their portraits hung. While in charge of the school, Albus Dumbledore would famously receive some good and some bad advice from the paintings in his room. Sirius Black's ancestor, a former headmaster around the turn of the 20th century, was one of the most talkative of the bunch. But while watching the Philosopher's Stone, if you squint your eyes, you can make out the image of Anne Bolin in a portrait. Of course, you'll remember Bolin as one of Henry VIII's wives, but she was also slandered as a witch for years. By hanging her portrait in Hogwarts, the filmmakers gave a small wink and nod to the tragic history that befell many political enemies throughout the ages of England, and the severity that the accusation of witchcraft carried. 9. Warner Bros Logo The Harry Potter films are richly filled with lore and symbolism, from the complex architecture of Diagon Alley's craft stores to the leather-bound volumes that filled the Goblin Banker's shelves at Gringotts, there's enough history within this world to fill an entire encyclopedia. But before the films even begin, you might notice that even the Warner Bros logo has its own story to share. In order to reflect the progressively darker tales of each Harry Potter book, the Warner Bros logo itself becomes dimmer and more ominous with each film. This means that the Warner Brothers logo animation that precedes the Philosopher's Stone is one of the lightest ones. If you compare it to the logo from the Deathly Hallows, you can really see just how much they contrast. 8. M.G. McGonagall on the Quidditch Trophy Minerva McGonagall was one of the most skilled transfigurationists in all of England, but her relatives might have been famous for something far different. When you think of McGonagall, you probably imagine a venerated old teacher, with enough magical knowledge to battle even the toughest Death Eater. But when you take a look at the walls of Hogwarts, you'll notice that the McGonagall name is etched into a Quidditch plaque, alongside Harry's father, James Potter. This name, specifically, was M.G. McGonagall, and while there were certainly more branches of this family in Britain than Minerva's, it's hard to imagine that there were actually that many who were also magically inclined. Considering just how interrelated all the wizards and witches were in England, I mean, even Voldemort was related to the Blacks, and distantly the Potters, this famous Quidditch McGonagall might have very well been Minerva's niece or nephew. 7. Aunt Petunia reusing Dudley's old uniform in the background If it weren't for Hagrid's sudden arrival in Harry Potter's life, then the young wizard's education would have turned out much differently. Originally, Potter's adoptive parents never intended to send him to a wizarding school. In fact, they never really thought much of educating the boy in the first place, Unlike their biological child, Dudley, who they enrolled at the best academy in the city, the Dursleys intended to send Harry to a particularly horrible institute, Stonewall High. And unlike their precious Dudley's vibrant school uniform, Stonewall's dress code required dull, prison-like garbs. And if you look in the background of some of the earliest scenes of the Philosopher's Stone, you can clearly see Aunt Petunia dyeing Dudley's old clothes to a drab grey the perfect colour for Stonewall. 6. Harry Scar Burning Throughout the first Harry Potter film, the young wizard tried to get to the bottom of one of his greatest mysteries, why does his scar burn? At times, Harry wrongly assumed it was due to any number of factors, even believing Professor Severus Snape must have been a cause. But if you look carefully at some of the scenes in the film, 
Harry's scar hurts the most when Professor Quirrell has his back turned towards him, and that meant Voldemort was looking directly at him. Now, fans of the book and repeat watchers might not have found this scene particularly significant, but for new fans and young children who didn't grow up with Potter lore, this tiny tidbit adds a rich layer to repeat watchings. 5. Symbolism By this point, you'll notice that most of the easter eggs and tidbits deal with Gryffindors and the good guys, but there were some scenes that played out with the lore of Slytherin as well. In the beginning of the Philosopher's Stone, Harry Potter accompanied the Dursleys on a trip to the local zoo to celebrate Dudley's 11th birthday. There, Harry found himself surprised to discover he could converse with snakes. But if you pay closer attention to the scene, you'll also notice that a group of school children quickly walk past the reptile house, adorned in bright green uniforms. The outfits bear a striking similarity to the house colors of Hogwarts Slytherin House, and is a nice bit of foreshadowing about the origins of Potter's parcel tongue ability. 4. Voldemort in the Credits after the film finishes and the credits roll, you might be curious to search for the original actor who first portrayed Lord Voldemort. Obviously, in later films, the actor was replaced for a higher profile star, Rafe Fiennes. But in The Philosopher's Stone, the well known television actor, Richard Bremer, took on the role. If you look through the credits, though, you wouldn't find a listing for Lord Voldemort. Instead, the filmmakers listed Bremer as he who must not be named. This subtle distinction continued the ominous, terror inducing mystery that surrounded Voldemort's name. 3. Uncle Vernon's Strange Day For fans of the film, the omission of Uncle Vernon's bizarre, wizard filled days that preceded Hagrid's arrival was one of the biggest disappointments. In the books, before Harry Potter was ever introduced to the wizarding world, Uncle Vernon started to notice a few strange men in funny looking hats and other bizarre oddities that foreshadowed the havoc that was to come. 2. Voice Changes By the time The Philosopher's Stone was filmed, the main cast was already approaching the period in their lives when their body would undergo all of its major changes, and for later films, this meant that Harry and his friends wouldn't always have their childlike, elementary school voices. By the time the Chamber of Secrets began production, nearly the entire main cast's voices had changed. For this reason, The Philosopher's Stone has the rare distinction as being the only film that captured the cast's youthful voices. In all later movies, their voices matured in the same way the themes would. 1. The Ruins of Quirrell's Game When searching for The Philosopher's Stone, Harry Potter eventually arrived at a final room, where Quirrell, and a parasitic version of Voldemort, desperately trying to get their hands on the alchemical tool. But if you paid attention to the challenges in the preceding chambers, you might have seen evidence of Quirrell's progress, especially in the Wizarding Chess Chamber, where there were shattered ruins of the towering chess pieces from the brief period before when Quirrell played his own game there. This was only a small touch by the production team, but it adds a layer of believability to the film, as you well know, we nitpicking fans are all too eager to point out the inconsistencies in the books and films, and it wouldn't take long for us to wonder where all of Quirrell's pieces were. After all, he couldn't possibly have been skilled enough to win the game with something as flawless as a fool's mate. And there you have it, 10 things you might have missed from Harry Potter and the Philosopher's Stone. Now, I chose the ones that piqued my interest the most, but there is certainly no shortage of interesting factoids from the film. What are some of your favorites? I hope you share them in the comments below. Hogwarts School of Witchcraft and Wizardry and the rich world of the magical community surrounding it is filled with more than enough lore to explore. And that's it for this video. If you enjoy the content, please be sure to like the video and subscribe to the channel. Stay tuned for more videos like this from the other films, as well as a series focusing on things you missed in the books. Until next time, remember, there is plenty to be learned even from a bad teacher. What not to do, how not to be.